Although the aircraft has not seen much commercial success since its inception, the growing demand for air travel has put it firmly back on Boeing's radar for future plans. If the reports are accurate, it appears that Boeing wants to revive the Super Jumbo 7478 for it to reclaim its position as the true queen of the skies. The most recent variant of the Boeing 747, the 8, may be about to undergo a massive redesign program. The post-war economy was booming, the average American citizen had extra cash laying around, and everyone suddenly wanted to fly around the world. As a result, airports became congested with planes, forcing airlines to operate the same route multiple times daily, a costly endeavor. This is how the Boeing 747, a historic airliner, was conceived during the commercial air travel boom of the 1960s and has captivated aviation enthusiasts ever since. Airlines in the United States started to ask Boeing for a much larger aircraft that would allow them to operate fewer flights and ultimately reduce both costs and congestion in airports. Examples of such aircraft were the Boeing 707 and McDonnell Douglas DC-8, which could handle intercontinental flights, but neither of them was the solution to the congestion. In response to this request, Boeing developed the 747 program, working with several airlines to create the aircraft. On February 9, 1969, the first version of the aircraft took to the skies, and it was eventually introduced by Pan Am over a year later, in January 1970. The Boeing 747 was dubbed the Queen of the Skies for its enormous size and impressive early success. For a long while, it was the largest aircraft ever, breaking passenger records in 1991 when 1,087 people were flown on a single plane as part of a covert operation to airlift Ethiopian Jews to Israel. However, not everyone was happy about the success of the Boeing 747, and one of its rivals would react. Today, Airbus is Boeing's biggest rival, but in the late 80s and early 90s, the gap was much wider. Just three years after the Boeing 747 broke the passenger record, Airbus announced plans to develop its own very large airliner to compete with the 747, which it named the A3XX, even though only two airlines expressed interest in purchasing it. Perhaps sensing a hint of jealousy from the significant attention the 747 was receiving in June 1994, Airbus took this as an opportunity to practice envy. Airbus ultimately spent nearly to $25 billion developing the aircraft that was subsequently known as the A380, indicating that it thought it required to outperform the 747 regardless of the expense. In the end, the Airbus A380 was larger and equipped with avionics than the Boeing 747, and while the technological difference between the two aircraft was not particularly great, its advancement caused Boeing to become alarmed enough to start developing plans to build a larger 747 variant in order to compete with it. Boeing planned to launch this version, known as the 747X, by 2005, the same year that Airbus planned to launch the A380. Boeing pushed for a practical 747's design as well as a different version known as the 747X Stretch, however because of rising expenses and a general lack of interest. The program was eventually abandoned, but Boeing refused to give up on the A380. Years later, the features created for the 747X series were used to design the largest 747 variant, the 747-800, which went into service in 2011, four years after the A380. Boeing believed that the 747-800, also known as the 7478, would fill any gaps that the A380 might have left. You can judge whether or not this was the right decision by comparing its statistics with those of an A380 variant that is similar to the A380-800. In terms of maximum seating capacity, the A380 outperforms the 7478 with up to 853 seats. This is because the A380 has an additional 2 feet in both cabin length and cabin height, while the 747 has a much longer cabin length. The 7478 can accommodate 600 seats in a business class configuration, while the A380 can accommodate 480 seats. However, the A380's increased width makes room for more seat rows. Both aircraft are turbofan-powered quadjets. The 7478 is powered by four General Electric Gen X 2B67 engines, while the A380 is powered by four Rolls-Royce Trent 900 or Alliance GP7270 engines. The A380's engines have a thrust capacity of approximately 23% more than the 7478, which accounts for much of the aircraft's higher maximum cruise speed of 587 knots over 5,050 knots. If nothing else, Boeing at least ensured that airlines would never cite the A380's range as an excuse. Lastly, weight and payload characteristics are maybe the one area where Boeing was unable to compete with the A380. The A380's maximum takeoff weight is around 575 tons, which is over 120 tons heavier than the 747-8-448 tons. Using any comparable measurements, 
The A380's maximum cargo of 87 tons is likewise significantly more than the 747-876 tons. A few years after the 747-8 and A380 were introduced, demand for both aircraft saw a sharp decline as airlines started to switch to the more fuel-efficient twin jets, which could now travel across the Atlantic. It turned out that the market wasn't ready for the A380 or needed the 747-8. When Boeing was developing the 747, Many enthusiasts thought that long-range subsonic aircraft would soon be replaced by supersonic transport aircraft. As a result, Boeing decided to design the 747 in a way that it could easily be adapted to carry freight and remain in production even if sales of the passenger variant declined. The result was both aircraft, especially the A380, being grounded by some of their operators. Boeing was now left with dwindling interest for its 747-8 aircraft and needed to find solutions to save it. Luckily for the company, it had already done one thing right. The 747 was experiencing something of a renaissance, but this didn't last long. As the pandemic's effects gradually subsided, Boeing was forced to save the aircraft once more. This has led Boeing to the conclusion that the best way to extend the 747-8 lifespan would be to redesign it to meet contemporary standards. The aviation sector is currently going through a significant shift as environmental preservation has emerged as a top priority and industrial driver. Although it is unlikely, if Boeing chooses the right parts, they may also think about slightly shrinking the fuselage of the aircraft. But, the most important question is, what are the chances of a redesigned 747? Many airlines that operate A380s have started to retire their aircraft, and demand for air travel is predicted to reach and surpass all-time highs in the coming years. An interest in aircraft with a capacity of more than 500 passengers may soon be increasing. Passengers also never really stopped enjoying the 747 because it evokes nostalgia. In fact, many travelers have said that their best flights have been on some of the largest jets available. This is likely because they appear more sturdy and secure from outside forces when flying over large bodies of water. In addition, the additional room in the cabin makes flying on these aircraft more comfortable for passengers. What do you think about the redesigned Boeing 747-8? The launch of the upgraded model would herald a new era of affordable, low-emission flying that could be the most cost-effective way to operate long-haul flights globally. Will the aviation sector be affected by its debut, or is it still too early? Please share your ideas in the comments section below, and until next time, be careful.